The fourth module of the course uh, is focused on uh, uh, one of the main supply chain processes that uh, we will see um, in, in this course, which is uh, a procurement. So after we, orga we, well, after we analyze how um, activities can be financially recorded in SAP when dealing with the accounting process, now we can see how these uh, uh, translate uh, when executed the specific uh, uh, primary processes like procurement, uh, fulfillment, uh, uh, production, and, uh, and warehouse management. And we will start with procurement. In particular, I will make uh, a refresh of uh, main basic elements of procurement that you need to uh, recall from Supply Chain Management 301 and for people who did it, Supply Chain Management 460, to successfully attend this course. So something about uh, process structure and uh, um, an organization. And then we will start dealing with uh, type of data and uh, key uh, object uh, uh, in SAP RP related to procurement. And then which are the main processes that can be supported uh, through SAP uh, when we deal with uh, procurement activities. Let's start with uh, a refresh about the procurement process structure. So. Uh, First of all, what is procurement? Procurement is uh, the process that uh, uh, allows the company to buy uh, materials, service, uh, components, so everything that is needed to run internal operation, which is not realized uh, internally. So these are some of the activities that are part of uh, the procurement uh, job, so recognizing need, uh, uh, finding potential and reliable suppliers, taking care of contract, uh, taking care of delivery of product and service as requested by the user, paying supplier, and then according to the company, taking care of receiving, inspection, storage, material handling, and, uh, and so on. The procurement task can be classified into two groups. Uh, uh, we have on one side what we call strategic sourcing, which is uh, everything that is related to defining uh, the supply network structure, defining uh, the strategy of buying goods and service, uh, and uh, uh, let's say make available a pool of supplier which can actually support uh, uh, operations. Instead, what we call sourcing and supply uh, falls within more operating uh, task, uh, which refers to now that my, my supply network is defined, now that I know exactly which are my supplier, which are the characteristics, where they are located and which type of categories uh, they, they, they support. Sourcing deal with uh, among the several that I have, I need to find uh, the most suitable whenever any internal needs arise. While instead supplier is supply, supply is concerned to once I have identified this supplier, I need to manage all the operational activities related to the order delivery payment cycle uh, to make the goods or the service uh, deliver and then the supplier paid uh, to, my, to my company. More, of course, and transversal to that, uh, there is a process of evaluating uh, both the purchasing people that execute the process, but specifically also the supplier that support uh, uh, the, the, the provision of this type of goods and service that your company needs. Strategic sourcing, very briefly, it is directly linked with the business strategy and uh, shape the procurement strategy for each category, so each goods and service that the company, uh, company buy. Basically, it starts with uh, strategic uh, make or buy. So, of, of course, uh, uh, make or buy, and most of you should have seen that in Supply Chain Management 301, define what the company buy from external and what the company instead make from internal, so that defines the scope of procurement. To make or buy decision, I understand uh, what I have to buy from external and what I have to instead uh, realize uh, internally through production. Once I have that, uh, procurement needs to manage everything that uh, is not bought, uh, is not, is not um, realized internally. The first thing is to, okay, now that I know that this component, this material, this service is uh, uh, provided by an external supplier, what do I have to do? First of all, I have to define uh, how many supplier and type of supplier. So are they international, are they national, are they big, are they small? I want for this category. Then uh, I end to understand which are the supplier available once I know that. Uh, so I know that I want supplier located in China, almost big companies, uh, uh, and I want uh, at the maximum four. 
Okay, then I have to look for potential names to be included in the supply base for this uh, component or material. This is called reverse marketing, which means uh, scouting the market uh, to understand uh, which are the option, uh, so the names of supplier according to the characteristic that I want to include in my network. Once I have done that, uh, of course I have the name, I have to identify the type of relationship that I want to establish with the supplier. Which type of contract, uh, if it is a long term, a short term, if it is more focused on quality, on price, on innovation, on sustainability, the possible development program that I want to put in place with the supplier. So everything that is related to, okay, these are my supplier, these are the names, uh, this is how I want my network configured, okay, which is the relationship that, that I have to establish with my supplier. And finally, of course, I had to define a set of KPI, so key performance indicator, that allow the procurement to measure the performance of the supplier. The output to this is that for each category, so goods and service that I want to buy from external, I know exactly how my network want to be configured, which are the potential names to be included in the, in the supply base, which relationship I want to put in place with them, and how to evaluate my supplier. Once I know that, I can step to sourcing. Sourcing is, okay, an internal user issue a request for purchase, so they want something, okay? Given the fact that for each category that I'm supposed to buy, I know exactly who to address in, in that situation, uh, I need to start the process of, okay, I know exactly uh, for this category which are my potential candidate to provide me a, a, this goods or service, I have to identify the most suitable one, which means first uh, translate the request for purchase from, from the user uh, to uh, a request for specification, a requirements definition, which is uh, communicable to the supplier. Then, there can be cases in which the pool of supplier that I have identified is not enough uh, compared to the specific request received, so I can make some more reverse marketing to identify other names that I, have, that I didn't identify at the strategic sourcing phase. Now I have all the names, what I have to do is request a quotation according to the specification uh, requested by, by the user, a quotation which is uh, I want uh, this uh, 10 laptop to work uh, in my office in uh, uh, Philadelphia. My supplier need to make a quotation in terms of both quality, so model, characteristics, uh, the delivery time, uh, maintenance, uh, services provided, and price. So ask a supplier to quote uh, the goods or service that you are, uh, you are requesting. And finally, once you receive all the quotes, you evaluate the quote, and then you negotiate and select just one supplier. So while this process has as a final outcome having a different type of supplier, okay, different type of supplier with which I know exactly which type of relationship I want to establish in case they will be activated in the future for this type of category. In this case, with the sourcing process, I select, whenever a request internally arises, a specifically supplier which will be the one that will be responsible to give me uh, the, the goods or the service that I am requesting. So this supplier will be awarded an active contract once an active, an active contract is in place, uh, of course, uh, purchasing people need to, uh, need to uh, issue order and then managing, taking care of the delivery and, uh, and the order uh, and the payment cycle. Uh, this is an example of uh, a requisition. So uh, coming from internal, this is an example coming from uh, a user from Yale University, prob probably like someone working like some lab or chemical lab department. So they need, you see, they issue the purchasing department a request from their internal catalog for falcon tubes and sodium, and sodium chloride. So this purchase requisition is then received by uh, the, the, the procurement department, is uh, manipulated, transformed if it's not supplier friendly, and is transformed in a requisition to be sent out for the supplier. 
supplier which are then request to quote the requisition made like and this is example of uh, a, a requisition requisition means that the supplier need to include the item the quantity the unit the description the delivery time the unit cost uh, including shipping possible warranty extension so everything that uh, allow uh, the, the supplier to um, communicate to the company a final quotation including also here all the aspect that goes uh, uh, that goes uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, beyond price for example the freight terms or whatever like you can attach also some further document to explain uh, the, the quality beyond the price of your of your quotation once again uh, the, the the contract is in place uh, you have to uh, order the goods directly within the contract uh, uh, from the supplier which means uh, monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the expediting, uh, uh, then uh, receiving the goods, so monitoring the inbound logistic and managing the inbound logistics if everything is aligned between what has been ordered and what has been delivered uh, uh, we can pay the supplier and of course uh, it is at this level that we can uh, collect the information uh, to evaluate the supplier on operational aspect, like how long does it take to deliver the goods, the quality of the goods received, uh, the type of uh, cost that the company incur in monitoring and checking quality of this type of uh, or this type of uh, delivery, and so on. This uh, in SAP is made through purchase order, so this will be like the core of uh, uh, what we will see in SAP. Uh, so through purchase order, delivery document uh, and uh, invoice uh, uh, we will see how to manage uh, the uh, particular this part of the process uh, uh, in order to assure that everything is uh, uh, that everything is aligned in particular uh, why we are focusing on the supply process because from an information system perspective usually SAP has been first conceived to support uh, this type of process, so the operational activities, so monitoring the expediting, uh, managing the inbound logistic, uh, and uh, uh, aligning the payment to the delivery and the purchase order. So usually SAP has been designed to support the workflow execution of this, uh, of this activity. Um, of these activities. Uh, uh, there are also opportunities to support the sourcing part uh, together with analytics. Uh, I usually do that in supply chain management for 60 to differentiate uh, uh, this from uh, uh, what we see in my MIS 404. So in MIS 404 we will be focused on this part. Uh, this part uh, is uh, uh, supply chain management uh, 460 in uh, SAP, while instead uh, strategic sourcing is not supported by SAP is supported by analytics and other application because it's a strategic, it's a decision-making process uh, and also in this case uh, we will deal with that uh, in supply chain management for, for 60. This, is, uh, this will be the supply process uh, and the focus of this module, okay? So <clears throat> we will see how to create uh, a purchase requisition, then from the purchase requisition uh, how to transform a purchase requisition to, uh, into a purchase order okay, within an existing contract and then once the purchase order is in place uh, uh, monitoring uh, and uh, uh, recording uh, material receipt uh, invoice receipt and payment uh, and then uh, alignment uh, uh, with accounting to actually pay the supplier. These will be the processes in procurement that uh, we will analyze and we will deal with uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this course. So the second aspect that is relevant to uh, be understood when we deal with uh, uh, procurement in SAP is uh, procurement organization. In particular when we uh, discuss about the procurement organization uh, uh, there are two, uh, two important aspects uh, to be um, to be clarified. Why is the so-called grouping criteria, so the approach used in grouping and organizing resources within the purchasing department, so people, uh, and the second is the level of centralization. To understand uh, this uh, aspect, uh, I need uh, uh, to recall something that uh, probably I already mentioned in, in, in the previous minute, uh, but uh, I just want to be uh, crystal clear to the fact that uh, uh, purchasing uh, after the make or buy decision is assigned to buy some things. 
These, uh, uh, let's say, goods, service, raw material, component, capital equipment that uh, uh, the purchasing can buy is clustered and organized in the so-called uh, purchasing categories. So purchasing categories, as you can see here, is a group of purchase product or service that are likely to be purchased from the same set of supplier using the same approach in all units and countries. So it means that uh, from uh, a strategic sourcing perspective, uh, all the activities uh, are the same, so lead to the configuration of the same supply network, the same type of relationship, uh, and the same uh, supplier characteristics. So the um, goods and services that can be considered homogeneous from a strategic sourcing perspective uh, can be included uh, in the same purchasing category. In fact, purchasing category are items uh, having a similar function uh, uh, they have been uh, um, let's say produced if they are tangible goods through similar uh, using similar raw materials and production processes they have similar specification uh, and uh, of course uh, they can be homogeneously grouped together example Printers, copiers, and uh, uh, facsimile machine, machines, uh, like they can be grouped uh, into a category which is called IT hardware. Or iron, steel, and aluminium, they are all metals, so they can form the purchasing category metals. Or company car fleet, hotel booking, and flights, uh, they all form uh, the category of uh, travel purchases. Or poster, advertising, customer gift, and gadget, they all form the category of uh, marketing purchases. Usually, uh, the, the purchasing category that characterize a company are usually represented through the so-called category tree. This is an example of what I mean. So here you see, this is what purchasing buy. So these are the specific items that purchasing buy. In the case of Airbus, which is a company that relies uh, flights, helicopter, and, uh, and uh, this type of, uh, of product. Aluminium, titanium, and composite uh, are called uh, the category of material or uh, hardware and infrastructure, software licensing and maintenance, application um, services, application project and services, network telecommunication, they are all grouped under the purchasing category ICT. Why? Because these are goods and service uh, which are similar in terms of function, uh, raw material and production process use and specifications. So they can be combined within uh, a same uh, group uh, that from a managerial perspective uh, have uh, uh, within the different item have the, have, 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 the, um, have the same characteristics. So purchasing by different items, uh, these different items are usually managed also to simplify the, uh, like the, 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 let's say the, 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 the process effort, uh, are managed uh, through a cluster approach uh, which relies different uh, purchasing category which are represented in the so-called Purchasing category three. Say that uh, the first uh, uh, decision that you have to take is uh, as uh, you are uh, managing different types of categories, uh, how you specialize resource in the purchasing department. So how you group resource uh, in the purchasing department. The first approach is uh, uh, using the so-called input approach. So people are specialized by typology of goods and service, so they are specialized by categories. So in the purchasing department of Airbus, you have some people which are dedicated to buying materials, some people that are dedicated to buy semi-finished products, some people that are dedicated to buy standard part, some furniture, some services, and some ICT. So you are specializing people by input. So each people is dedicated to buy some type of categories, input approach. There are, however, another approach of specializing people in the purchasing department, which is called output. So, one is uh, very, uh, very uh, intuitively the so-called product, project, or customer. So, these uh, type of uh, categories uh, are used to realize a different type of product. For example, helicopter and uh, uh, and uh, uh, helicopter and uh, I don't know military flight. So people are no more specialized using a product approach, are no more specialized into the category that are bought, okay? So material, semi-finished product, equipment system, but they are specialized in the category that are needed to realize a particular product. So maybe you have, we have an office which is no more 
one off is for material, one off is for semi finished product, one off is for equipment system. But we have one off it which is called uh, helicopter, okay, which includes all the people that are specialized in buying material, semi finished product, standard part, equipment and system, furniture, services, and ICT to support the realization of helicopter and similar for uh, military military uh, military airplane military flight same uh, if instead of using the product we want to use uh, customers so we buy we specialize people we group people that uh, are uh, in charge to buy all the material or the product or the services that are needed to satisfy the need of a particular customer or market or geographical area we specialize people to buy all the material, all the component, uh, all the services that are needed to uh, support uh, selling product in a specific geographical area, so in a specific market. This is called output approach. Let's see this again with an example. So this is a general and then I have one more specific. Uh, so this is the purchasing organization. In the first case, we have the head of purchasing and then we have people which are grouped, which are specialized by category. You see, category one, category two, category three. So here you have people that are specialized in buying everything that belongs to the category one, no matter is where this category will be included, market, product, service, customer. So there is a specialization by input because we don't care where this category will, will end, in which product, for which customer, for which market. These people here are specialized in buying this category. So all the department, all the product, all the areas. In this case, instead, as you can see here, for example, this is an, a market, uh, a market uh, uh, grouping, uh, grouping approach. Here, I have people that are no more specialized by category, but they are specialized by market because they buy all the category that are needed to sell and realize product in this market. So each office, this, this, each of these is an office, each office manages the demand for each category that is needed to support operation in a specific geographical area. This is product, specialization by product. So in this case, uh, I no more specialize people by category. I specialize people by product, which means that a person working here will be responsible to buy all the categories uh, that are needed to realize, to realize uh, a specific, uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, product. So people here are specialized by product, output. Speci people here are specialized by market, output. People here are specialized by category input because they are <coughs> expert in buying this category no matter where this category will be included in terms of product, in terms of market, or in terms of uh, customer. <coughs> Another example, just to be clear, consider Apple iPhone, these are some, not everything, but just to simplify, some of the components that realize an iPhone or a mobile phone, display, touchscreen, cameras, battery, loudspeaker, antenna, microphone, fingerprint, loudspeaker, SIM card, and rear case. If I want to use an input organization, I will create a purchasing organization where I will have some people buying a display and touchscreen, some people buying cameras, some people buying batteries, some people buying antenna, no matter is uh, the iPhone or the iPad, as they share a lot of components. So people here will buy cameras that will be suitable for iPhone and iPad, but like they don't care. They will just buy cameras and they will be suitable to be included uh, in iPad and in iPhone. <clears throat> So here, the category manager, so who manage the office here, will, be, will have buyer specialized in components purchasing. Input organization. If I want to adopt an output organization, I will have two different offices with people here dedicated to buy all the component tailored and specific uh, uh, customized for iPhone and all the component tailor and specific customized for iPad. In this case, is a product focused organization. Output people are uh, specialized in buying component and uh, goods and material and service uh, for a specific uh, for a specific product. 
Say that uh, no matter is uh, the input or the output approach that I use in organizing <coughs> the parts in organization, uh, one of the most important configuration variable is the so-called level of centralization. So <coughs> the parts in organization is centralized, so I have a unique purchasing organization, which by goods, service, uh, and uh, component and equipment for the whole company, or I have uh, multiple purchasing organization, for example, um, one for each geographical area, one for each plant, uh, or uh, I have a decentralized purchasing organization uh, uh, because, uh, for example, project need the specific supply and so I decentralize uh, a purchasing office for each project. So it's not immediate that uh, in every company there is just one purchasing uh, department. Purchasing can be one if we adopt a centralized model. In the centralized model, <clears throat> if you draw the organizational chart, there is the CEO, there is production, there is marketing, and then there is procurement. So there is just one procurement department uh, which is fully centralized and is responsible to buy everything that the company needs, no matter where these requirements come from. This is, uh, uh, let's say, this is the first, let's say, uh, option to realize a centralized model. Remember that uh, company then operate in different area, company then uh, uh, have different type of market to serve, a company can adopt a fully centralized model, so having a centralized uh, uh, procurement department, but uh, uh, um, with the personal, personnel which is located in different geographical areas. So basically, you have a purchasing organization which is central, but people in the purchasing department are not staying like in uh, New York, where the headquarters are located, but they are staying like in uh, Zhuangzhou in China because we have a production plan there. But the procurement people here are not reporting to the production, are simply located uh, from centrally to locally, just to be more near the need to get more uh, the need of the production plan, but they are still like uh, procurement uh, personal, procurement employee. They are not like production or uh, plant uh, uh, plant uh, uh, employee. So they are simply <coughs> locally located from the headquarters in New York uh, to the plant in China, just to be near the customer in order to better understand their their need. That's an option that can uh, uh, overcome uh, the distance that usually exists between uh, the plan that operate in uh, South America, in uh, Asia, in uh, Africa, in uh, Australia, and the procurement department, which usually are administrative people, which are instead located in the headquarter of the company, which can be central, in a central location, so far from uh, the actual, uh, uh, let's say, operations, uh, operation needs. So buyers are delocalized to get uh, a local need, but they are still reporting to the procurement department. So they are still part of the procurement department. The other option is instead uh, <coughs> to have a totally decentralized uh, organization where, again, there is no more a central procurement department, uh, okay? But simply for each plant or each product or each, each project that I have uh, in my, uh, in my uh, company, I establish a local procurement department. So I have people here in procurement that depends, that reports on production or on project according to the type of company, which buy specifically goods and service to satisfy <coughs> this type of production, this type of plan, this type of project. So in this case, I have several procurement offices, while instead in this case, I have just one. So here, Number of procurement organization, one. Number of procurement organization, one. In this case, number of procurement organization, n. So, uh, where n is higher than one. So, I have several local procurement office which reports to production and each one buying specifically goods and service for plant or project. Another and I, this, there is also, uh, between the totally decentralized and totally centralized model, there is a so-called hybrid decentralized model, which established a central procurement office, which is in charge of buying all the categories 
which are shared across the different departments of an organization. For example, think about travel. Like, all the people in the company, no matter where they are located and no matter which word they produce or uh, which is their, their aim of their task, need to travel in the same way. They need hotel, they need flights, they need train, they need tickets. Like, so it makes sense uh, from a purchasing perspective to centralize, to centralize the management of travels because uh, like, this is not specific uh, for country of product. Or think about like uh, office furniture, or think about uh, IT, or think about uh, maintenance and cleaning services. So all these type of purchases, which are common and shared and uh, standardized across business unit and division, like it doesn't make any sense to make them manage a local level. So I create a central procurement unit which is uh, <clears throat> able to manage all the categories that are shared across business unit and department. So business unit and department needs same thing. This same thing can be easily centralized. Then instead, to buy an helicopter, I need a particular type of aluminum. So in my local procurement department, uh, I will put people which are specialized and dedicated to buy this particular type of aluminum. When I have to buy instead, when I have to realize instead uh, a, uh, an airplane, I need a specific type of engine, so I will put their people dedicated to buy this particular type of component. So for all the specialized purchases, uh, I keep a local procurement office, uh, which is focused on buying just the categories that are specifically for the business unit, for the production plant, for the project uh, that they are supposed to serve. So in this case, we have, again, more than one purchasing organization, but less than this case. The central one uh, uh, in charge to manage uh, share purchasing categories across business unit, department, plants, whatever is the unit of analysis of our company, and the local procurement department, which is instead dedicated to manage specific and technical purchasing categories.